plug that all here into our shader. And you can see that now we have kind of a stylistic eye. Blender has released a free official asset pack that makes it super easy to make stylized characters like this. This only took me like 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna show you how to install the asset pack and then I'm going about and show you some techniques on how to best use that asset pack to create characters like this. This video is sponsored by XP Pen. So let's dive in here and look at how I went about creating this. Now, if I go ahead here and drag out my asset browser, we'll go ahead, click here at human base meshes and see that Blender has released this official pack making it very easy to build these characters and they range from stylized to realistic. So first up, let's take a look at how to install these. If you go here to Blender, download and then click demo files, you'll find a human base meshes here. And you're gonna go ahead and download that and put that in a folder where you're going to store it. After that, you're gonna come in here and you're going to go to your Blender preferences, down here to file paths, you're going to click add asset library and then select the folder that your human base message is in. Now, the other thing you wanna do is come down here and into the import method, you have various options here. By default, it'll be set to append reuse data. You wanna set it to append. What this means is that every time you drag in one of these assets, it will append it as a new object. So this time you see that we have two feet in our scene. Now, the other thing you need to do is up here, if you see this little symbol right here that symbolizes this is a collection. So if I go ahead and grab a collection and drag it in here, what it will do is create an instanced collection. So what we want to do is twirl this up here and tick off instance. Now this is drug in the entire collection, so it will behave just as if we had created the collection ourselves. Now you may notice that these are kind of multicolored, and this, if I grab one of these and tab into sculpt mode here, you'll see that that actually correlates with the face sets. Now if you don't know how to use face sets in Blender, you can come here into sculpt mode, and what you can do is hover over any face set, and you can hit H, and that will hide that face set. Now if you hit H again, it will bring everything back, and you can also hold Shift H, and that will hide just that selection. And if you hold Alt H, that will unhide anything that you have as well. And what this allows you to do is, for example here, it allows you to focus in and just edit certain portions of the mesh. So if I hit Alt H here, you'll see that now I've only affected that portion of the mesh. Some other important elements of this pack here is that they are all closed off. What this means is that when you are in sculpt mode and you go ahead to do a voxel remesh, it will be very easy to remesh all of these due to their closed off nature. And the other thing is the wireframes. All these wireframes are incredibly clean quad topology, meaning that they're really easy to kind of mush around in your sculpt mode and they animate and deform correctly and you can toss a subdivision on any of them and it will work correctly. So now that we've kind of seen the benefits of the pack, let's dive in and create a character ourselves by starting off with making those Pixar eyes. Also, if you don't hate free stuff, you should go ahead and check out my free sample pack here where you can get this lightning arc effect for free. So we're gonna go ahead and drag two character elements into our scene here. So we have head stylized, body stylized, and then we have the eyes here, realistic and stylized. So we're going to do the head just like I did in the opening here so I can show you how to go about some of the changes you can make here. Now by default, it's going to pair this with the stylized eyes here. If you go ahead and take a look at these in rendered mode here, we'll see that these are interesting, but maybe not the effect we wanna go for if we want that kind of like Disney or Pixar look in our eyes. As you can see here, there's no concave over there to really give us an eye specular highlight. So let's go ahead and create more of a Pixar eye. So first things first, what we're gonna do is go ahead and just kind of reset this head to the center. So I'm gonna grab these eyes here, parent those to the head here, grab this head, hold shift S and selection the cursor. Great, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag in this eye realistic object. So I'm gonna go ahead, put that there, and you can see that it doesn't match our eye here, so we'll switch to wireframe mode. We're gonna drag this up so that the pupil lines right there at the center, and then we're just gonna scale this in and kind of get this into the same position as the existing eye in there. 
Great, let's go ahead, delete the stylized eye, and then you can just keep playing with that until you have a position you are happy with. Now let's go ahead and we're going to isolate this eye right here. And we can do that by hitting forward slash. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and begin adding some materials to this eye. Let's come over here to the material panel. We're going to add a eye white. Let's go ahead and add an eye pupil. Then we're going to go ahead and add a eye clear. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and add an eye iris. So let's go ahead and start with our assignments. So we'll go ahead here, snap into the wireframe view. And you can see here that this eye is built of various parts. It has the outer part and then the inner part with the iris. So let's go ahead here. We're going to grab this object here. And the way I did that is just hover over it and pressing L, and we are going to assign this iris here. Let's go ahead and we can just give that a random color so we're able to make sure that it is working. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is grab this inner circle here. I'm going to Alt click and Shift and click that. And what that's going to do is grab that whole inner ring. And then if I press F, that will fill that with a face. Now that face will automatically be selected. So we're gonna come in here and we're going to assign this eye pupil. Let's go ahead, set this to black. And we don't really want this to accept anything. So let's do turn the specular down and the roughness up. And that'll just assure it kind of always has a dark black look as we want with the pupil. Perfect. Now we'll go ahead and we'll hit Alt H there. And we're going to grab the entire body out here, make sure the inside is no longer selected, and we're going to add the eye white material. Now, lastly here, what we want to do is create this kind of clear material on the front. So let's go ahead and grab that center vert there. And if we hit Control plus, it's just going to grow. And we can go ahead and assign that eye clear. Perfect. Now let's switch back to render mode. And let's go ahead and do the eye clear material. But this is a great time to talk about our sponsor, XP Pen, because if you are interested in texture painting or sculpting or grease pencil and blender, then I cannot recommend a tablet highly enough. And I have to say, I am thoroughly impressed with XP Pen. Now, one great thing about XP Pen is just the sheer variety of products that they have and that they probably have something within your price range, ranging from what I have here with the Artist 24 Pro, which, but they also have simpler variants as well, such as just basic drawing tablets that you can get, for example, here in the US store for just $20. Now, as you see here, I am working on a large tablet. This is their Artist 24 Pro with 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity, two and a half K resolution, and a 90% Adobe RGB color gamut. I have to say that I love the size of this thing, and it has this amazing stand on the back, making it easy to change the angles. It feels great. The pressure sensitivity feels great. The software was easy to use to plug in and play and just begin working. And I have to say that I'm really excited about the experience of this tablet and definitely recommend this. And I may return to this for a long-term review too, if you're interested in that. So with that eye clear material selected, we're gonna go ahead, turn the transmission up and you can see that we are beginning to see our iris underneath. Great, now let's go ahead and just turn that roughness all the way down. And that'll make that completely see-through, which is exactly what we want. But you'll notice here that the transmission is also kind of creating a darkness underneath. So I'm going to show you a quick trick where you can kind of get a glass look without having to worry about all those light bounces inside of there. So we're going to go ahead here and we are going to add a light path node. And then here we are going to take the ray depth. We're going to drag this off and do a less than math node. And what that's going to do is basically make it that anything less than these ray bounces won't be shown or considered. So if we go ahead and type that into the alpha there, what we can do is we can play with this number. So I found that something like two works. And you can see that now we're basically kind of using the alpha to eliminate some of those light bounces and give us a brighter look while maintaining those highlights. That was something I was really excited to share about on this channel because it took me forever to find that. I also like to crank the specular up it's not realistic, but just for your eye, it creates a more kind of glossy look, which is generally what we want. Let's come over here to the eye white tab. We're going to grab this one, we'll crank the specular up and let's just drop the roughness down and get just a really nice kind of shiny, wet looking eye. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and do the iris. 
Now, as you can imagine, this tends to be a tad bit more complicated, but I have a really simple node setup that we're going to do. So first of all, what we're gonna do is create a Veroni texture. And I'm gonna go ahead and just plug that in so that you can see everything that we're doing here. Now we're gonna go ahead and play with this texture size. I'm gonna maybe set mine to something like around three, and we can adjust that more later if we need. Now let's go ahead and add a mapping node and coordinate node. So if you hit Control T with the add-on node wrangler enabled, it will allow you to just put these nodes on here automatically. Let's switch this over to object. You can see that's changed the layout. And then we're going to change this type from point to normal. And you can see that we're starting to get some of our elements back there. And then we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and scale one of these down to kind of get our streak. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one to zero. Now what that's doing is scaling everything along the local Y axis of the normals, which is giving us that kind of smeared look. Great. Now this is great for an eye iris kind of basic texture, but we'll add a tiny bit of realism by using a mix node. So create a mix node there, turn that into color. Let's go ahead, drag that up there. And what we can do is plug this into the vector and introduce some noise. So we go ahead, grab this B and do a noise texture here. And then we can use this to kind of create noise in our iris. So at zero, you can see it's not affecting it at all. So I'm going to set mine to something around like 0.25 and then just play these parameters here. I don't want a ton of detail since I'm going for something stylized. Turn that down to zero, which will disable the roughness. And then let's bump this up to something like 10. And you can see that we're getting just a little bit of wobble in our iris there. Now what we can do is add a color ramp here and pick whatever color that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead with blue eyes like I had in the opening, just go ahead, pull this up here. Something around there, maybe over here, grab more of this kind of highlight and then just crunch this down so that we get a bit of an iris look. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, plug that all here into our shader. And you can see that now we have kind of a stylistic eye. So if I tab back out here, you can see how that looks there. And if we go to wireframe mode, we can just duplicate this and move this over to the other eye. And then we can go ahead and grab that eye back there, the stylized eye, and we can just get rid of that. So then now we should have kind of two Pixar looking eyes. Perfect. Okay, so how do we go about uh, adjusting this head? What are some of the things that I recommend doing? So I would recommend splitting your view into two and having a side view and a front view. So just press one on the numpad and three on the numpad. And then you can grab that object and you can tab into sculpt mode here. And then as I said before, you can focus in on these face sets. But let's talk about some of the most useful brushes in this situation. First up here is the draw brush. And what this will allow you to do is go ahead and kind of just draw some geometry into your character or also subtract that geometry. And so this is really good for example, if you wanted to kind of bolster out the chin. Now you'll notice here by default, the symmetry is on. You can turn that on or off here, mirroring on the X. So if I go ahead and just click there with the draw once you can see that now we have a bit beefier of a chin. The other one I'd recommend is the inflate, and this allows you to just kind of balloon up the geometry in certain areas. So if we wanted to go ahead and make the character's nose a little bit more bulbous, that would be an easy way to do it. Now, I'd also recommend the pose tool here. By using this pose tool, we can go ahead and just grab various elements, and you can set this radius to smaller so it only affects that ear. So if I wanted to give them little Dumbo ears, I could go ahead and kind of make their ears stick out a bit more like that. Great. Now, the other tool I would recommend is this multi-plane scrape. So if I go ahead and grab this scrape here, I can begin adding a bit more defined detail. So we can see here that our draw line is kind of soft. And let's say that we wanted more of a sharp or kind of like villainous looking. What we can do is grab that and you can see how it's just going along and pinching that. I'm going to go ahead and make that brush a bit bigger. And you can see how that's giving us a sharper draw line. If I switch over there, you can see how much sharper that is. Now the last brush and arguably, in my opinion, the best brush for this type of work is the grab brush. Now this grab brush will just let you go ahead and grab various pieces of geometry, but you can grab large sections and just kind of move things around just like that. Perfect. 
Now, the last thing I'd like to show is that you can also just use a lattice. Now, I use an add-on called Fit Lattice. So I just type in Fit Lattice and it will just create that add-on, parent everything and fit it. If you do it manually, basically what you have to do is go ahead here, create the lattice, and then don't tab into edit mode. Just use the scale and scale this into position on your character. Now, if you tab into edit mode, it will screw up the modifier. So a bit backwards from some of the other objects. Now what we can do is go ahead, grab our character here, add a modifier, the lattice modifier here, and then select that lattice. Now, when we go ahead and edit this lattice, we can go ahead and move around various things. You need to attach it to the eyeballs too if you wanted to affect those, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and hide those. Now you can grab the lattice modifier here. You can go ahead and crank this up. And this allows you to go ahead and kind of make some broad adjustments. So oftentimes these type of characters tend to have kind of smaller chins and slightly larger heads, a little bit more baby proportions. So that's a way you could go about doing that. So let's take a look at how I did these eyebrows on the character. So what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is grab a plane. So just a mesh plane and you're going to tab into edit mode there and you're going to rotate by 90 degrees and then you can go ahead and just scale that down to about a size you're happy with. Now we're going to add some modifiers onto this plane. Let's come over here to the modifier tab. Let's add a shrink wrap modifier. Grab this surface here. And then while we're still in the side view here, let's grab that. Let's just move this out in the front and kind of move this up here, just around where we're probably going to begin kind of starting our eyebrow, somewhere like that. Great. Now let's add a subdivision surface. We're gonna bump that up above the shrink wrap. We're going to set that to either simple or Catmull Clark. Catmull Clark will give you a more rounded look. Simple will kind of give you more of a square look. So I'm gonna leave mine at simple. Lastly, we're going to add a solidify modifier. And we're going to set this offset to one. And as you can see there, what that's gonna do is move that from one side of the origin point to the other. And then you can just play that thickness until you have something that you are happy with. Great. Now you can go ahead, tab into edit mode here, and then just grab the verts you want to extrude and hit extrude there, scale those in. And you can notice here that it's starting to get a bit messed up. So if you come here to the shrink wrap, you can offset this just slightly. And then put that just above the surface there. And then you can continue to move and play with those. And then after you've created the basic shape, what you wanna do is grab the object, hit convert to mesh, and then you can revert back to sculpt mode and just shape it up a bit more until you get the final shape that you're happy with. 